SI fills us in on how he feels in the lead up to his fight. There are fake profiles of me on social media, catfishing people left, right and center. We need to find someone to offload the train, calibrate the scales on the loading shovel, the pressure mounts at QPR, and I've got one eye on next week. I'm Daniel Nisash for Weekly, episode 96. I'm going around the back. How many starts already? Four pumps to do one liter. Woohoo! Put 110% in everything I do. Good man, I'll put two of them on it. And turn that round, boy. It's fisting it out! So hard. Who needs to get you out? Oh, wrong way. The lads, they had this different head. I don't know how that's fair. <laughs> I wasn't actually going to tell them that. Finding the right person. I'll just do the thing myself. Your green screen mm. has finally arrived. Okay. I had this bespoke made, and it took six weeks to make. It came from Germany, uh -huh. it came here, and then UPS lost it, and I had to give them 10 days to investigate it. While they're investigating it, I just started making another one, and I went and got a, um, a manual one as well, because I didn't want to come here and say, Hey, JJ, man, you know your green screen? <laughs> I haven't got it, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but I'm sorry in that, but I'll sort it out, innit, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but here it is. Wow. How you feeling? You ready for the fight? <laughs> hey, that's not a good sign, bro. <laughs> hey, bro, that's not a good sign. Yeah, yeah, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited, yeah. yeah. Uh, I finally got some good sleep. Yeah. I think um, camp started two weeks ago, and the past two weeks I've had terrible sleep. It's yeah. been, like, disjointed. So I've had two hours there, three hours here, four hours here. Mm -hmm. It's been all over the place, but these past few days, I finally got good sleep. <laughs> good man. I finally got pristine sleep. So now, yeah, bro, I, I feel yeah. ready, man. I've been training harder than I did for Logan. Gone are the days where I would be complacent. Yeah. I think I was very complacent with the first Logan fight. And then from then on, I was like, never again. Yeah. So now I make sure I put 110% in everything I do. I don't think I'll be in the front row, but I'll be in the second or third yeah, yeah, row. Yeah, no, we'll go you, we'll yeah. go you. <laughs> <laughs> JJ has promised me that he hasn't been spying on I the haven't. YouTube. I have not yeah. one thing. But as soon as JJ finishes, mm. he's flying out. So I need to <laughs> make sure we finish and get this reaction, yeah? And what I'm gonna do is put them side by side. The reaction for the room and the reaction when he wins the fight. I'm gonna put them side by side. <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon the reaction for the room is gonna, be, gonna be better. It's gonna be even better, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For that. Honestly, it probably will. <laughs> I'll be like, after being Alex, I'll be like, calm, all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's expected, isn't it? I expected this, yeah, yeah, come on, guys. <laughs> Now all the materials we need are now here. Speaking of materials, we've had an operator arrive in the yard and thankfully it's time to offload the train. You like the way I did that, innit? You're the best man. Prepare uh, for the fight. I Just, don't do a lot, bro. Come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't do a lot, man. Yeah. Who's on yeah. your undercard? So we've got uh, Face Summer versus Blueface. Face Sensei versus Kenny. Okay. We've got my bro versus Fusi. Yep. Fusi looks like he's in mm -hmm. good shape, but mentally mm -hmm. he just seems like he's on it. Mm -hmm. And my, with my bro, like technique-wise, mm -hmm. destroy him. Mm -hmm. I just need Deji to actually want it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who's gonna win that. I did say on my on video that I think I think Fusi will win. I mm -hmm. said it just to try and put like a fire under Deji's belly mm -hmm. to be like, yeah, you know, not everyone expects you to win. Everyone thinks you're gonna win. Them kind of yourself. Jose Mourinho tactics, yeah. Well, yeah, essentially, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Speaking of Mourinho, yeah, I thought to myself, we sponsor QPR, and I was gonna invite you to QPR. Then I realised you got a box at Arsenal, uh, yeah, and yeah. I was like, no, no, no. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not inviting this man. Yeah, yeah, like, well, I mean, if you, I, don't, I don't mind going to a box. Yeah. It's just, if it's like... What do you think, I'm, we think I'll make you stand in the, you sit in the stand, bro? Oh, that's what I... <laughs> nah, nah, bro, nah. That's nah, what nah, I nah, mean. Nah, 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 we... It nah, turned we, into a meme. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah, we got a corporate box, glass oh, screens, refurbished. Oh, Wait, 
QPR aren't in the... Shepherd's Bush, West London. No, but they're, in, they're not in the Premier League. Bro, allow me, man. Like, yeah, of course, they're in the Championship. Uh, so, so, what are you saying? That's not really... QPR yeah. game. Yeah. But... Unless we get you in the third round of the FA Cup, I don't think yeah, it's going to... Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll, all right, all right, I'll all right cool. Next year. All right, cool. If, <laughs> Ar- if Arsenal do get QPR, yeah, yeah at QPR, okay. you're there, yeah? Yeah, I'll be there. Promise. Yeah. Good man. So Michael O'Donovan um, did a charity track to run at the weekend, yeah? And as part of the auction, I gave a QPR shirt. So Michael decided in his infinite wisdom to bring a signed Arsenal shirt. Thank you, Daniel, for the lovely QPR shirt you sent across to the Joe Wright track to run on behalf of Milford Hospital, Hospice, I should say. But look at this one, the O'Donovan sent. <laughs> look, Daniel, come on, mate. You've let them down here, son. Come on. Look at this. Come on, lad. And we don't even support Arsenal and we've got one signed. You would have been here today, I know, but we'll, we'll book the tickets again. And then thanks for letting us have Will again today to do the videoing. He's done a great job again today, Will. Thank you. Here we are now, Daniel, all coming back from the track to run. Michael is consistent. Of course he's coated me off. But let me ask this question, yeah? What is a lifelong season ticket holder Tottenham fan doing with an Arsenal shirt? And Michael, you may be coating me off and saying the QPR shirt's not signed, but it says Asheville on the front, doesn't it? No Arsenal top, no Tottenham top, no Tranmere Rovers, no Aldershot, no Backstreet Sunday League pub team says O'Donovan Waste Disposal on the front of it, does it? Aha! Let's get into the room and actually have a look at how the progress is going. We're finishing off the fiber optics on the ceiling. And once again, can't tell you a lot about it because it's a separate video. What I can tell you is this is gonna look somewhat like this roof, but this one's gonna be a little bit more special than that because it can change colors. As you heard me say, we have the green screen here and um, we have the box for it to fit into the ceiling. We have everything we need. And now, what, what, what's wrong? What don't we have? Brackets. We don't have the brackets? Really? Probably they lost it. We don't have the brackets for the green screen? Oh, you know when you just run up your mouth and you should have just kept your mouth shut? It was at this point that Daniel knew that he messed up. Oh, let me pull a face so you can pause it down and do the face. It was at this point that Daniel knew he messed up. Well, I'm going to head back to the yard and make some phone calls on the way. But something interesting happened yesterday. We got a call from GB Rail Freight and they had to come to the yard to grease the loco. It appears that Asheville aren't the only ones who have to do maintenance on their plant machinery and vehicles at the weekend. But I didn't even know you had to grease a loco, and I don't know why it hasn't got an auto greasing system on it. Now, when I got the call, I thought to myself, oh, I'm gonna go to the yard and film this. But it was Sunday, I had to train, I had plenty of work to do, and I allow myself to have about four hours off work on a Sunday. So I did not film it. But I will find out about greasing a loco, and more than likely, that will be a separate video. All right, I'm gonna head back to the yard and I'm gonna find out what happened to these brackets for this green screen. Why are you laughing, Bartosz? One, two. That's made your day, hasn't it? He's, you're nodding because you don't want your voice on camera. Smart man. It's uh, Monday afternoon and Tez has come up to see me and you know when a man tells you a story and I was like oh no what has happened remember last week he's a get it done man much like I was but sometimes I never used to be like this I never used to be like this I think of the liability and what's the worst that could happen and Terry went and started offloading the train which he's fully capable of and I said tell stop just in case da -da 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 -da. I, tell, I stopped him and then Terry come in and he said The problem with working with you is that when you say something it comes true If not straight away but not long after And I thought to myself Oh no, <laughs> what has happened to that train? What is that? What, how much is this going to cost me? How much trouble am I in? And how much paperwork are we going to have to do? And Terry tells me a story What happened Terry? 
One of the volumetrics needed some work doing. It was loaded with ballast. So I thought, while it's quiet, I'll unload the ballast. The material got stuck in the lorry, the auger jammed, and the hydraulic hose burst, and it went all over me. Covered me in oil from head to toe. And I thought, why did I get involved? <laughs> why did I just not leave this to somebody else? Now, how is that story anything near to the build-up that the man gave me? I said not to offload a train because it might get derailed, yeah? And the train could get stuck here and we could get a 20 grand fine. This man had a hydraulic hose go. And Terry, you did the right thing because if it didn't happen to you, it would have happened on the job and we could have messed up someone's job. So you did the right thing. Respect for that. Don't worry, we'll get you some new, we'll get you some, that's how you know this man, this man's earning. Man's wearing Ralph Lauren shorts to work and getting oil all over his Ralph Lauren shorts and his, hun how much are them trainers? Oh, oh, I don't oh, know. Oh, ah, oh, <laughs> ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. <laughs> they're an old pair now. Yeah, they're an old pair. They're an old. Terry's had a move. Dame Dash over here only wears a pair of trainers once and throws them in the bin. We have a train tomorrow morning, and as of yet, we still don't have an operator for it. Um, um, <laughs> slight, slight oversight. Slight oversight, yeah. Oh, man. I read the spreadsheet for the trains. I wasn't actually going to tell them that. Yeah, but I mean, we're all human. We make mistakes. Go on. What did you I read happen? the spreadsheet for the trains wrong and I read the days that it was loading from their yard rather than the days it was arriving. So I read Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday because the train that left today will be loading today. I should have read the arrival sheets that was Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So now we're scrambling because of my mistake. We're going to allow Terry for his mistake. I just hope that we find an operator in time. Because <laughs> if we ain't found an operator by five o'clock, I will be driving to people's houses, knocking on their doors. I will be pleading. I will be calling every single MD of every single firm I know. And I will be up all night until I find someone who can offload that train at half six tomorrow morning. Now, I hope that doesn't happen. Because I'm taking my diet very seriously and I want to go to the gym after work. And I do need to get a little bit of sleep. Because the job you saw me at a long time ago, where they had the archaeological find, I am going there first thing in the morning to do some additional testing. I'm trying to get as much done as I can. Because old Duckers over here is going on holiday from Wednesday. And then get this. The new guy you've seen me working with in transport, Chimek, he already had his holidays booked before he started working here. And... His last day is Saturday. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week, I am by myself in transport and ops. I'm gonna level with you. You see when people say, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm gonna be back at the tip of the spear. Me, me, me. I am not looking forward to it. That is long. <laughs> I do not want to do it. I categorically don't want to do it, but I have to, and I'm fuming. But while I'm doing that, I will be incapable of doing anything else. I won't be able to get any new jobs. I won't be able to push anything over the line. I won't be able to uh, talk about any of the larger things that Ashley are trying to do. I'm not gonna be able to talk about any construction jobs. I'm gonna be completely submerged in running lorries day to day and obstacles what I'm gonna need to overcome. After you was off the other day for your birthday. Nah, man. And then you gotta go and get your hip done after that as well. Is there not a way? Yeah. <laughs> Hear me out. <laughs> Hear me out. Yeah. Where are you going to be? When? When you're not in on that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know, out in Mongolia somewhere. No Wi-Fi, no phone connection. Bro, they've got satellite things for that, bro. You never watch Homeland? We should give you like some sort of radio to take with you because you'll miss this place. I know you will. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is, I suppose, I suppose you want to go away as well. I suppose go edit the videos while you're gone too, should I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is long. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Because Jay's off next week as well, aren't you? Yeah. So Jay's off next week as well. But shook you production. Wait, I have something to ask you, though. Oh, here we go. Go on. What do you want to ask me? No, right. No, right. It's for Jay. Yeah. He wants to ask if he can take Friday off. So because, why are you asking? Because he's scared to ask it. Well, how's he going to ask him? He's not going to ask him. <laughs> what, are you no, the what are you, the trade union? Yeah. What, are you representing the rights of people, bruv? <laughs> I think it would be a nice gesture considering he's getting married. Do you? Yeah, I think it, I'm just Do saying, you? isn't it? Yeah, well, it's up to you. <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, it sounds like it's up to you. <laughs> so Dan is asking me for Jay if he can be off on Friday because he's going to get married. Now, what kind of guy would I be if I said no? 
Well, the answer is most definitely no. No, man. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Why don't we all just why don't we just all go on holiday and leave me here by myself? That's all I need. Yeah, fine. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Will can extend his holiday too. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Let's just set up ten screens, five computers, eleven phones, and I'll just do the thing myself. Yeah. I'm gonna put something on the side here, put one foot here on one keyboard and do all of this. <laughs> oh man, these breads are ducking me. Oh. I'm just gonna say, uh, again, that episode, what's this? Episode 95 now, isn't it? This is 96, Terry. Is it 96? Let's get with the program, man. Okay, so this is gonna be episode 96. Yeah? It's coming out. I would say for the previous, and it's gonna come back to haunt you, 86 of those <laughs> previous episodes. We're gonna flash back. Terry Skyvin. Wait, where are you going? You got 15 minutes left of work. Terry ain't in for five days. He's ducking man's. Oh, Terry is perfect. I took that back. I addressed that. What a guy. I need 10 more like him. Bro, you should go online, yeah, and you yeah. should book extra baggage for them feelings that you're carrying, bro. <laughs> to take them wherever you're going. You're carrying feelings. That was time ago. I haven't said Terry don't do no work in ages. I said he's ducking man's. I haven't said that in ages. What if you get out of my office, man? <laughs> <laughs> Man's leaving me on my own, man. <laughs> I'm brewing, bro. I don't want to do it, man. There's got to be some shed, man. Let me tell if you only you're cheating or something, man. <laughs> <laughs>I just had a conversation uh, with someone about inheritance tax and they said uh, if, um, if anything happens to my parents this property I'm gonna have to pay 40% tax um, so we were talking about different ways to uh, get around it because it is a lot of money and if your parents bought a house I don't know 25 years ago that was worth I don't know 80 odd grand and now the house is worth 600 grand and it's their only asset and they want to leave it to you so you know you can move your life forward you know and that money could be very important to your life and that is your parents gift to you but a 40 percent tax it's not the same is it if you haven't got the money you have to sell it and pay it or you have to get a mortgage for the current market value of that property if your parents transfer the property to you before then and it's in your name between three and seven years there's a sliding scale so it's not 40 percent but that figure goes down if your parents transfer it in your name but they still live in the property apparently they have the benefit of the asset and you still have to pay the money anyway so if you want to avoid the inheritance tax, not only do your parents have to transfer it to you, but your parents have to completely move out and have no benefit whatsoever. Now, is that right? If your parents have worked their whole life and that's the only thing that they want to hand over to you and they work for 25 years to, to clear the mortgage and when they bought it they paid their stamp duty and when it's time for them to hand over the only thing they can really give to you they'll be very proud and they give it to you and it becomes a burden and then you have to and then you have to pay 40 percent on it or sell it to pay it for me that uh, that's very that's a very tough pill to swallow just marking out the first test hole. On this first one, we're going to dig down about one and a half meters and have a look at the ground. We're going to go down by one more bucket. We need to get to around 1.5, and we, I think we can 
begin to see natural clay here. There it is. So we've got uh, one sample at 1.5 and one sample at 1 meter. So we're in the top corner of the site. Now we're going to go down to the bottom corner of the site and we're going to do another one to see if this follows through all the way. Best case, it does. And uh, if we do this testing, then we can get it approved into Feel a tip. In now, and uh, the tip will be comfortable and we'll feel a lot more comfortable within ourselves as well. One more, yeah. One meter, now we're doing 1.5. The more um, test areas we can have across the site, the more accurate the readings will be, and we can find a home for this. Just because it looks bad, it doesn't necessarily mean it's hazardous, it may be non has. Um, so we'll find a home, take everything. And I'm happy to tell you that in the yard, uh, the company have arrived who are going to calibrate both the loading shovels again so we can get it that bit more accurate. Here's the techers to get the calibration done. So the loading shovel takes a bucket full of material and we see what exactly comes out on the weighing scales. We then load it onto the grab lorry and drive the grab lorry round to the weigh bridge. Now we know what the grab weighs empty so we know exactly how much material is on the lorry. We cross-reference that figure with the figure on the loading shovel and if it's not accurate then we adjust slightly. We do this twice. So we did two buckets on the big loading shovel and two buckets on the small loading shovel. Now all is accurate down to 1%. On my way now to QPR, navigating my way through central London traffic. Little problem on one of the Volvo volumetrics. Now there's a brake ECU that sits directly under the conveyor belt and um, ballast keeps falling in it. So there's a fault that keeps coming on the dash. Braking system inactive, stop truck immediately. Uh, now yesterday, and we unplugged everything from that sensor and there was water in the plug and we cleaned it out, plugged it back in and it worked, but later on in the day, it went wrong again. So we now have a new, um, one of those brake ECUs, which we're gonna fit and we've got to try and um, put something over it or somehow protect it from the bottom of the conveyor belt and everything falling on it, but we need that lorry back on the road ASAP. I'm nearly at QPR and I was just speaking to Friday and every time we fly the drone uh, we have to call up um, Heathrow and tell him the drone permit number and um, tell him yeah we're about to fly it can we have permission and we get the thumbs up so we don't get in trouble like we did previously click here to watch an episode where we got in trouble flying the drone in our yard Mark, that's your entertainment. Yes, Asheville, yeah. You're not, you're not doing another train montage, are you? <laughs> we are, yeah. <laughs> so you guys never do these days. <laughs> it's the new stuff. It is, it is. Yeah, we just want to activate it so I can get the drone up and then I can just get more footage of this train. Listen, allow me with my trains, man. Like, I can't have everybody jumping on this hype. Oh, yeah, train montage. I think these guys are going to block the permission to fly the drone because they don't want to see any more train montages. So, yes, guys over there, when we ask for permission to fly the drone, it is generally to film another train montage. Just pulling up with QPR. What is going on? Okay. Right. Well, I won't be parking now, will I? Huh? What's going on? Easy. Hey, a shirt signing session today. What am I supposed to do? Well, what? I don't know, mate. Uh, uh, I don't know. Where am I supposed to park? You see, yeah, you go around there jumping in the queue, man, yeah, and sign the last, last bit on the shirt. I don't think I don't think they want my signature, mate. <laughs> I need to talk to you at some point as well, Paul, about yeah, about this thing, man. We're just we're, we're struggling getting hold of these materials, mate. The, they were supposed to deliver the, the cubicles yeah. today, and now they've said Tuesday. But the, oh. but the courier has said he's loaded it, but the but the company is saying you ain't getting it till Tuesday. What? I don't know, mate. Mate, I go. mate, I cannot get hold of anything now. The the vanity was meant to be delivered on Tuesday. No sign of the vanity. They don't know what's going on. They don't know what's going on with the vanity. Is there no other suppliers we can reach out to? No, but I'm trying. But but I'm, I'm getting things like 
the, it was a commercial unit I had ordered, and now I'm looking at residential single units. It's going to look dreadful in there, mate. Okay. It's going to look awful. Before you go, give me a shout, and I'll okay. get Josh come. We'll have a talk. Yeah. All right, fine. Cheers, Thanks. I'm going around the back. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Is, is there any space for me to park? For I need I need to see the people here. I'll only be here half an hour. Can yeah. I park anywhere? Maybe on the back. Yeah, that's why I'm round the back now. Yeah, Only parking I could get. The boys are already in here. Hi, Chris. Hello, my How's it going? How are you doing? Fantastic. Unfortunately, with the problems we're having with materials, uh, the company who were doing the, the uh, standing area, uh, the materials are stuck in Calais. So they haven't even got over to Dover yet, so that's not going to be ready. Um, we're pushing on to finish the toilet. We're doing the suspended ceiling today. And then tomorrow the floor's going down for the next two days. Then we'll try and get the cubicle in, the cubicles in for the game. But we are now told that the cubicles, uh, they don't know where that delivery is. We have the toilets. But we are also told that the massive commercial vanity unit, they don't know where that is either. So just getting deliveries and materials at the moment is a big old problem. So I've finished the ceiling now and uh, the floor will start first thing tomorrow. But I'm going to show you the floor happening today. Wrong way. Oh my god. No, I've got myself lost now. There's some stuff going on in the stadium with fans. I believe there's players uh, signing uh, kits. But I have a meeting that I was meant to be at already, running late, heading to my meeting. Back in the yard, it's 1.40. We just had the blades for the big shovel arrive and we've had a diesel delivery. Wednesday and I'm in the yard. Um, I spent the morning at QPR filming a quick video. We we're under a bit of pressure down there and I didn't have time to film anything. Legislation on ground safety states that the standing and seating capacity of a stadium... Yeah? yeah. Legislation, um, here we are. We're gonna be trialing something on our loading shovels. So um, we're gonna be trialing two forms of gel. One is a thicker gel, what we're gonna put in the tires. That's a slightly more expensive option. And then there's a water-based one, and we're gonna trial both of them and see which one works better for us. But in order to do that, you need to let the air down on the tires, then you need to put the gel in, and then you need to pump the tires back up, and that should save us from punctures and um, help these new tires survive for a long while. Uh, before I run off learning a little bit more about this, I've got this, um, uh, this document here uh, that I can use. So this is a 26 and a half inch tyre, so it says 26.525, uh, it said we need 14 litres. Now on the pump, um, every time you push down, that is a quarter of a litre. So if it takes me four pumps to do one litre and I need 14, uh, 14, 14, 28, 28, 28, 56. So we need 56 pumps to get 14 litres into each of these tyres. That's a plan anyway. As well, you need the valve at 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock because if the valve is at the top, um, then everything can go in and get stuck. If the valve is at the bottom, it may not spread out throughout the tyre. So either 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock should give you even distribution. Tell me. Um, so I'm trying to book things for next two weeks. What materials? Um, one more panels are remaining. So he, he wanted additional one more panels in the comms room. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a variation. Oh, but, but I, I don't want to go and then go again. No, so no, no, everything no, same time. We want to go once over there. Okay, yeah, okay, visit. fine, fine, fine. Will, did you discuss with Bartek today? Yeah, a lot. And, and we know what we're doing. 
Go on, head of tech. We, we, we're going to do everything until the uh, DMX arrives. When DMX arrives, then we get the... The crash run programmer to do all the crash run. Then Bartek probably needs to be on site. Have you spoke to the crash run programmer lately? Yeah, I spoke oh. to him on today. I'm really? With and <laughs> okay, but looking at it, it will be finished. Yeah. We'll still be at QPR at that point. When is the cubicles getting to QPR? They said Tuesday next week. So that's the... That's the that's, you, you talk to them, you, you double check something on the phone and then they give you something else when you pay the money. Dave is talking about the toilets at QPR and the problems we're having with the supply chain. Click here to see a video where um, I explain what happened at QPR and I explain whether or whether or not the stadium would be ready for the first home game of the season. Today was not a great day. Um, I filmed a short video this morning. I had to try and film the start of a brand deal. I was meant to watch um, weekly today. I didn't have time. Um, I meant to do another watch through. I didn't have time. Uh, Terry's not in. I was supporting Chimek in, in transport. Uh, my phone kept ringing. You saw the company came to do the um, work on the load and shovel tires. We had the incorrect valve, so that couldn't get done. And every time I've gone to do some, every time I've solved one problem, another five have popped up. And it's 4.26 p.m. I have no idea when I'm going to leave, but I am definitely still going to go gym because I ain't having it no more. I'm getting back in shape. I think it's working. I think it's working over the last couple of weeks. And I still need to look at the list and the lorries and what is going to happen tomorrow. Have to look at it today, not tomorrow morning. And she cancelled the two Arctics? No way, at this time of night. Yeah. They cancelled the Arctic work for tomorrow at 4.39. 4 4.34, basically. Trouble is nobody wants to answer the phone at this time. Hi, Daniel. Can we put Arctics on that? Yes. Can we send them tomorrow? Yes. All right, well, you've got something to put the Arctics on. Okay. Leave it like half an hour and then we'll go over the list, yeah? Okay. All right. Well, um, we've had the Arctics on some long-term work, but we had loads of jobs that were all running, struggling to keep up, to be fair, and now everything's just fallen off a cliff. Like, all the jobs, there's like 11, like 12 jobs, which couldn't get enough, and now everyone's either not digging, or they've been stopped on site, or now they're pouring concrete, Oh, or they're past that stage. Ugh. It's just good that I could find something for the Arctic, but that's going to mean um, tomorrow I'm going to have to find something else for us to do. Tomorrow, Friday. Yeah. Um, probably Monday as well, I would say. Good man, I'll put two of them on it. Yeah, great. Do you want me to, I'll forward you over what I sent to Terry with the job numbers you've got. Please, thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, bye. The work dried up. Man found some next work. Just paying even better. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, boy, they tried to take me off the work. And then another job that pays better came on. Guarantee for three days with two lorries. Stupid. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm serious. Man, turn that round, boy. Thursday and I'm in the yard. Um, just having a look here at my shower tray that's been sat here for two weeks, which I have no idea uh, when it's gonna be fixed. So at the moment, using a bath at home and showering at the office, uh, we have a tipper pulled in, which has a puncture, it needs to be repaired. And we have an operator, and we are now offloading the train. Um, you can see the train montage in a minute. Don't know that like you ain't seen one in this episode already. I just watched for a brand deal with Will. He is making edits. I'm gonna go upstairs with Chimek. I've got some work to chase. I've got some cube test results to send to people. In my head, I'm trying to plan for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when I'm alone. So I'm gonna leave the office in a couple of hours. I'm gonna go and check what's going on at KSI. I'm gonna go and check what's going on at QPR as well. We should have a QPR video going out at 5 p.m. today. We're waiting for some feedback from QPR. I have my emails to check also. I just need to have a chat with Shane and Julia about trying to support me a bit next week um, when I'm on my own. Simon will be back in on Monday, thankfully. Teru will be back in next Thursday. Um, 
the and I also need to go and chase some work for the roll-on roll-off because when you don't chase people uh, when you, they're not at the forefront of your mind sometimes they forget about you and they go and give your work to other people but I'm having to borrow it out I'm going to make some phone calls now you can see the train montage KSI's checking on the progress. Um, it's going well, it's going to be finished soon. But um, in the ceiling before, we had these, as you normally see, we had these white smoke alarms. Now, we asked the manufacturer if we could get them in black. They said no. We tried, every, we tried other manufacturers who do it in black. Uh, the block management won't let us connect it to the system. Um, part of the fabric in the ceiling, large parts are cut out and it's just fabric. So it's just like a transparent fabric. Like, And I said, can we put the smoke alarm in the ceiling recess? They said, no. I said, this is no longer a living area. It's not a bedroom, it's not a living room. It's, a, it's basically a home office. So does it also need to have a smoke alarm? Technically, no, but for the fire rating of this building, yes. So after all the work we're doing here, at the moment there's going to be a big old normal white smoke alarm slapped in the middle of this, uh, this fabric galaxy ceiling, as I like to call it, which isn't ideal, but safety is safety and safety comes first. Uh, just heading across the yard, I'm under serious pressure man, uh, running out of time on everything. I'm a short staff, there's a lot of people on holiday. Thankfully, a cement delivery has arrived. I just need to go and have a look at a volumetric because we got a trouble with one of the Volvo ones. One of the drivers sent there said there's a load of hydraulic oil leaking from the panel. So somebody has asked me to send them the plate on it, uh, the serial number, and send a couple of pictures. So they want to turn up, but they want to turn up with what they think it is what they need. But also I'd like to get the vibrators changed because the boys are saying that the vibrators on those Volvos are much weaker than the ones on the Scania's. Train is completely empty. We are stocked well. Here we have our sand, what the pigeon is sitting in rent free which I find actually highly annoying. Don't know why that pigeon thinks it can do that. Sand, shingle, and what we do is we just mix the ballast in the corner here. Sweeper stays in the yard, but Ross is away. Uh, Peter's in a different lorry today. Uh, one of the drivers didn't turn up because he had to take his, his wife to hospital. Still never had a day when we had every single Asheville lorry out the yard working. Going to see if I can plan the plate on this Volvo and the basketball hoop reminds me that although everyone said they were going to teach me and we we're going to play basketball and it's going to be great fun Dan and we we're going to do this together and we we're going to do that together not one person came here to offer me any basketball lessons so at the moment I'm going to become a meme and embarrass myself at the up and coming basketball game and now here are the vibrators now this vibrator works on air and I think the ones on the Scania works on electric but these are definitely not doing the job we've got material getting stuck in the body we need a vibrator to go off that's going to shake everything have a look here you can see the leak on the valve block it's 6.52 and um, I'm still on the road I'm going to try and make sure I get myself to the gym so I don't lose out on my momentum and my gains. I have seen people being catfished before using my identity. Uh, people have contacted my management and said they thought they were talking to me on a dating website for months. Uh, let me clear it up. I to categorically tell you that I am not on any dating sites. I don't have time for no swipe left, swipe right, double click lottery business to, for me to get catfished myself. I don't have time for any of that. So I'm not on there. 
But now there's a new account on Instagram and this person is posting what I post. They got 10K followers in her. They're doing all right, but they have an underscore after my name. And they're reaching out to people, asking how they are and promising them returns on investment and talking about crypto and stuff like that. People be careful. And once again, I can categorically tell you, I would now, I, I don't even answer, I don't even look at my DMs. But if I was looking at DMs, I wouldn't be people who follow me to see what I'm doing. I wouldn't be messaging them, telling them what to do with their money and offering them returns on their investment. That is the opposite. I'm not going to encourage any of you to part with your money, not with what's probably going to happen uh, with the economy now with some of the things I've heard today. So people, be careful. There is no Asheville or Daniel platform where I will be reaching out to any of you trying to convince you to part with your money. And I'm not on no date, dating site looking for love, like trying to fall in. I can't even fall asleep. Or I'm going to be on a dating site trying to fall in love for. That is definitely not me. And this traffic is brutal, man. This is so hard. Everything is so hard. It's such hard work. I can't even go anywhere without it taking ages or something breaking or someone doing something that I've got to fix. It's so hard. <sighs> yeah, that's it. Do a U-turn. Oh, yeah, now man's undercutting me. That's perfect. Now he's undercut. Yeah, of course. Ah, oh, this is brutal. Friday morning, 7.57, got me in at 8 o'clock, but I'm around the corner from there, so I won't be late. I'm meeting Shukyu Productions, and um, we're talking to somebody about um, their home being fully automated, so they want to do a refurbishment, but they also want to discuss having control for everywhere in the house. Click here to see a video on home automation. Uh, the train, of course, is late. It was meant to be in at half six, seven, and now the train um, will not be in till half nine, but there's a little bit of work in the yard to do. There was a little bit of reserve of sand that we had um, in the relief bay in the middle. We're taking that sand, putting it in the main bay to make space for, um, to put type one now all in the relief bay. trains confirmed for next week which is Monday Tuesday Wednesday I have um, operators confirmed for next week Monday Tuesday Wednesday I thought to myself let me just ask the people in the yard check the current state of diesel and no one reported it and no one told me but we are completely out of diesel so I don't really deal with the diesel people but I called and I said look can you get us out of stuff they said they can send a delivery today they're gonna email me um, straight away and I'll approve it, make a payment so we can at least get 10,000 litres to get us out of stock till, till the end of the day, probably. And um, the Volvo uh, volumetric lorry, what you saw me taking the serial numbers off yesterday, somebody's arrived in the yard to do a couple of repairs to it. Now we're hoping he can do the repairs because that lorry is due to go out from 12 o'clock and go on the road and do some work, but they have to come back to do a major repair a bit later on because we have one volumetric that's still stuck in Volvo waiting for a test, and we have another volumetric in Southern Vulcanizing uh, which is being worked on. So out of five, at the moment, we're down to two. My problems have got problems. On the way back to the yard, I couldn't help but stop at the basement salvage. What a cinema. We had a touchscreen panel arrive that we'll quickly installed while we're heading back to the yard. But of course I can't show it to you. Sorry guys. You look older than me. Michael, my brother, I feel <laughs> older than you. You and I look like Steptoe and Son. <laughs> we do, don't we? The years are taking their toll. Oh man! No, 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 no. Wait, you, wait, you, you're in it as long as me, and my friend, and your hair will go grey. You're already going grey. You keep dying it, then you? Tell me this, and tell me no more, as you say. Go on. That firm of yours, the one with all the broken down sweepers, what is it called? K 
Kaylee Plant Tire. Say that again. Spell it out. Kaylee Plant. K A Y L E I G H. Kaylee. Kaylee Plant Tire. Kaylee Plant Tire. As in the Kaylee dancers, as the Kaylee dancers in Ireland. You know what I'm saying? You know. Right, all right, we've had a little bit of a hiccup here. I don't know if it's the, there's a language barrier or something, but the lads in my office in the video team, they thought it was KD plant, as in Kilo Delta plant, but they obviously got confused, because I looked at that KD plant, and it looked like they got some nice kit around them, and all your sweepers are broke down and old, with a million Ks on them, so there's been a bit of a mistake here. They've been promoting another firm, and now I've rectified this. I, I, you I, I can are probably about as much help as much help as two glass eyes. Oh, that's, that's nice, isn't it? I call, <laughs> I call you I call you to sort something out and all you can do is assault, in, insult me. Well, you knew yours wasn't going to be nice to you, didn't you? Yeah, I know. Well, you, you, apparently you're my only so mate. you told your mate the sticker, man. I'm here, please believe me and believe this good. I am your only friend in this job. I know. Taking a notice of all these other fellas that come around. You're all right, man. Uh-huh. I hear and I listen and I... Two things. One, I'm glad we could have this conversation so I can now rectify it. Um, mm -hmm. Two, unfortunately for KD Plant, we won't be promoting them no more. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and three, I know you're my only mate in this business and I know they all call you up and go, why are you talking to that mug for? He don't know what he's doing. He's been, yeah. at, it. He's been at it five yeah. minutes. Exactly what they say to me and I say, how do you know I'm talking to him? Well, he watches videos. So I said, if he's that bad, I said, why do you watch his videos then? <laughs> One of the mugs actually had us on the um, on the bar of a, on a on the on a pub bar one day listening to me talking to him. Really? Yes, yes, yes. What is he? Is he coating me or coating you or coating both of us? He was coating. You saw him having a coat of both, giving both of us a coat each. I think. Oh really? Well, at least he, at least he's being fair. At least I think your coat was going to be. I think my coat was sort of three quarter left. I think yours was right down to your ankle. <laughs> <laughs> I shared the story on Saturday, Sunday, about the grab lorry. Which grab lorry? Your first one. Oh, which one? When I smashed the fence down, or when I didn't know anything about it and I was driving? <laughs> oh. you, you just took, <laughs> when, you just, when you just took off driving it. <laughs> Do you know what the story is? Yeah. That's your story time. I was digging a basement and I thought to myself, do you know what? Like, I can't get the service, no one's coming to do it. You know, the, you know these grab firms, like, the, you know that firm that your sister sold and made you unemployed? They never turn up to do any work. I thought to myself, I'm not having this. So I've gone and bought a grab lorry and the fella's dropped it down and he's parked it up in the old yard at Cricklewood and I'm like, right, I've got my grab lorry. Uh, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. I think I paid 65 grand for it. It was 2013 and it was an 09. It was a DAF with an Epsilon uh, 120 crane on it. And I turn around and, a and, and Aiden at Harrier goes to me, Hey Dan, you got a no license quick. I went, what's a no license? He went, <laughs> he went, are you being serious? I was like, what's a no license? He goes, he goes, how'd you learn to use the crane? I said, well, I was in the yard just messing about with it. He goes, you got a ticket for the grab as well? I went, what's a ticket for the grab? He was like, Dan, you need an O license to run a lorry and you need a grab ticket to work on the crane. And he goes, uh, and he goes, have you passed your test? I went, no, I'm all right. I've got a provisional and I'm taking lessons. <laughs> <laughs> he went, do not go out in that lorry. And I was like, all right, like, are you sure about that? He goes, yes, do not go out in that lorry. But then I got an O license. I got my grab ticket. I passed my test and then I was out on the road. First job I did, I went and I wiped out someone's fence because I was pulling the grab levers and the lever to put the leg down is close to the slough and I pulled the wrong one and I took out the geezer's fence on my first job. Of course I did. Of course you did, because you are an amateur at our job. It was like the first day I went out in a lorry in my life. Maybe you should have stuck to the wallpaper and the painting, didn't you? I, yeah, you're right, mate. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe I should have. <laughs> maybe I should have. But what? What can you say? Well, I'm, I, if yeah, I'm, if I'm, right, right. if I'm anything, I'm you've a trier, right. man. Yeah, you've got to try now. You don't try, you don't get anywhere. While you're there, it's my understanding that the train has arrived in the yard. It's time to get it offloaded. That's just how I cut the, the train. That, that's how, don't worry, that's how I cut the video. Now the video's going to jump to, um, see, I'm making you famous there. I'm, I'm, I'm giving the people what they want, and that's the, right about now is when the train offloads. <laughs> Thank you.
we're not not taping. Uh, no, no, mate, we're not taping. Not me, tape you. Why would I tape you? I don't tape you. Your sister would get um, very upset. Click here to see a video where I interviewed Michael <laughs> O'Donovan's sister about women in construction. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I'll just keep plugging it. Uh, mate, I'll go all day. I'll just keep plugging it. Two Olympic lads were talking highly how you just took it and went and just went to work. Tell you about those gentlemen from Limerick. I, I love those gentlemen. And one of those gentlemen, he was telling a story in a pub to um, to another man I know, Simon the Farmer. He said, Daniel the young lad, he bought his grab and he was in the yard and they were laughing at him in the Cricklewood yard. Saying, look at his old lorry, what's he doing? Stick to building, they were laughing at him. His exact words were, a lad, they ain't laughing at him now. Exactly what you said Sunday. He said, they're not laughing now. Look at that, Donovan. When we was away with Scania in Sweden, you had two drinks and he was upside down then. Stop where you are. You didn't come out of us. Michael, I was with you when you saw the V8 and you said we're going to get one of them as a flagship. I was with you in Sweden. Me, yeah, you, you didn't come to the pub with us. I was. Do you know how I know I was in the pub with you? Because I barely knew you, and I turned up and I had jeans with rips, and you went. Who's this geezer? No one told me it was fancy dress. That's how I know I was at the pub with you that day. Don't forget to send out the invites. I know you're going buying tables this year at all the events. Don't forget to send out invites because no one else will invite me. I'll always invite him. I invited you to football Saturday to see a proper game of football. No, 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 no. I'm going QPR Saturday and you only invited me because somebody else cancelled. <laughs> I was in your manor all morning. You could have had a bit of breakfast in the, in the, in the bistro on top of the road. I'm not, I'm not eating breakfast at the moment. I'm on a diet. She's getting back in shape. Well, I'm pleased believe me, the last time I've seen you, the diet's definitely not working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying. Right, Daniel, have a good weekend. I hope your team do win because we do need to get you up into our premiership so we can have a couple of bright days out. That would be nice, Michael. That would be nice. Hello? Chimek, can know. Julia hear me as well? Yeah, I can hear you. Right, guys, we have a 300 meter concrete pour on Wednesday, yeah? Okay. 300 meters. Do not yeah. take any bookings for concrete on Wednesday. No problem, that's fine. Tell everyone, Tuesday, or, or or Thursday. Any driver later who who can do a load or something, I need to start stockpiling the four to 20 mil um, stone in the yard. Any tipper, any Arctic, anyone who's got a gap at the end of the day, I need them to bring back four to 20 so I can stockpile. Of course, yeah, that's fine. Um, yes, hold on, sorry, one, sorry, one second. How's it going? Loading. What? Loading. Yes, going it, what's happening? I'm all right. How you doing? You all right? Don't you need me? Where, where, we'll let you know. Yeah. Driver reported a problem with this lorry. They said there was some smoke coming out from underneath it, but there were uh, no faults reported on the dashboard. So we nursed it back to the yard, went underneath, and if you have a look at the picture here, it looks like some of the ad blue had crystallized and it was getting really hot. And that's what the smoke is. Well, I hope that's what the smoke was because we've given it a clean and we can't see any smoke at the moment. The lorry hasn't cooled down that much. So I'm gonna move it, park it up and put it in the other yards. Um, we're not super busy tomorrow. Um, we've got some concrete quite far away and we're gonna come back and we've got concrete a little bit more locally. Um, I'm trying to think of how I'm going to uh, map out Monday. That's the main thing that's on my mind at the moment while missing calls repeatedly and having to return them. Bit of a history lesson. How it all started doing a weekly show is when I did a day in the life. Click here to watch that video. It's on about um, 2.3 million views, soon to be 2.4. And um, the lads, they had this different head that went on, um, on the washer and I kept telling them to swap it and they didn't. And they kept using uh, the whizzer head and they kept taking the paint off the lorries and like battering things with it. And a couple of them damaged their cars. So I just took that whizzer head away and actually put it on the pump lorry so that so he can clean the lines with it. However, I used to have that problem that they used the wrong head. Now I have another problem. And you know what the other problem is now? Now they use the right head, but they leave it on the floor. So it keeps getting run over. So they just keep running over it. And once a month, I have to buy a new hose um, for the washer. Once a month. 
And here we are again, doing another hose on the washer. Mate, they yeah. take it and they just leave it on the floor, they run over it. This is not working, the cop, right. They probably attached it to a lorry and tried to drive around the yard with it. Okay. All right. Ah, let's go and see the concrete lorry. This is the lorry that was fixed this morning. Tell me something. Is this, was this leaking today? No, no, it's all that today, yeah. <laughs> Friday and I are going different directions because I need to run up to the office and talk to Chimek. And uh, all the lorries are getting back now and they're tipping up the uh, 4 to 20 mil graded shingle at the back. And you can see the stockpile we've created in one day. I'm in the yard, it's Saturday, it's 11.24. Um, I was in the yard early this morning, no time to film. I left the yard and I went and had a, no, I'm not gonna say swim. I was in the pool and I went from one end to the other. I don't think what you can call me doing swimming, what I was doing, you can't call that swimming. Uh, now, then I popped into QPR just to um, have a look around because the boys were still working. They'll be working up till 12 o'clock till the game's gonna start. And I went into the Asheville box and Remember last week, I showed you the uh, owner of QPR. He did his box next door. Well, when they did it, they decided off to cut the electricity to my box. I don't know how that's fair. So I've had a word with the lads and they're frantically trying to reconnect the power to the Asheville box for the game against Middlesbrough, which is gonna start in a little bit. I now have to go upstairs and have a shower, uh, get changed and try to get to the ground for 11.30, which is near impossible. But that's how we do things at Asheville, things which are near impossible. Uh, yeah, and I was trying to watch the latest version. You can tell by the way I'm walking around, I need to go to the toilet. Um, and I'm trying to, I just watched the latest version of the Basement Salvage Cinema, which hopefully we can bring you soon. And we are preparing for Monday. Now I need Terry's phone and Chimek's phone, but I can't take them now because Chimek will be here till three o'clock. So I will have to come back to the yard tomorrow or later tonight. And I'm gonna work from Chimek's computer, re-familiarize myself with everything and try to remember all the registrations of my trucks and all the driver's names, which I kind of know, but I don't know what driver likes to be in what truck. And I don't wanna put the wrong driver in the wrong truck and then they get upset and say, I've kept my truck clean and you put someone in my truck that made it dirty because some people are very precious about their truck, which I like because they're looking after um, they're looking after the company's assets. Going for a shower. Walking through the White City Estate. It is. I'm only 15 minutes late. First game of the season. We are back at Lofters Road. How are we doing? Not bad. That's a nice box you got there, man. You're giving me some competition. We need to go and see, so. Oh, have you not seen it? it? They were trying to fix it earlier. When they did your box, they cut my electricity in my box. And it starts already. Mr. Sint in his ear. How are you doing? is here. How's things? Not bad, can't yeah. complain. Start of the season. You're welcoming everyone today, yeah? No, no, no. We just got, we got, we got Chloe coming in today, so. Ah. We're welcoming him here. Hopefully she'll bring okay. us a bit of luck, you know? Okay. Are we going to win today? We are, yeah? First points of the season today. Okay, we're open. It's a nice day. We have arrived. Yeah. I want to congratulate Wayne because he had his beautiful daughter, mother, and baby both healthy. 100. But get this since last season, Wayne has fully finished his plumbing course and he passed his driving test. Get it. <laughs> get it. Everything is done. So Wayne is on the road and now he is officially a plumber and there's a new addition to the family. Yeah, and I hope to be a part of the Asheville plumbing firm. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, I've been waiting for you for two years, to be fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah I have yeah, been yeah, waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, who else? Who? <laughs> the best dressed man according to Daniel. Doctor in the house, we're the first guest to arrive. As always. Before, even before Daniel. No, 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 yeah, no, 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 I was, yeah, but I was, I was working this morning. So was I. Like, you act like I'm unemployed. I've got a job too. Yeah? Um, I'm hosting. This is National yeah. Weekly. I've got the champ, Chris Congo here. You know, the captain of industry. You know, you know. And the you know. WBC belt. 
Nalok Boxing where we got another champ here, yeah? And I was talking to this man and I know the struggle and the years that this man would have gone through. What are we ranked in the world now? 19. 19th in the world. I love to see that. Using his two hands and fisting it out. His <laughs> glory right there. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad he came and I just want to congratulate him. Thanks, bro. That's, that's good. Sunday morning. And I'm on the road again. I'm just heading to the gym. I'm going to try and get a leg session in. Uh, have a steam. And go in and out of the cold water. Um, help the recovery of the muscles and the joints. And then I'm going to head to the yard. And then I'm going to collect Terry's phone, Chimek's phone, and prepare for tomorrow, which is going to be a really busy day. Sunday and I'm in the yard. Train is still here. Let's have a look around. See if I can see any punctures or flat tires. Try and get ahead tomorrow. <laughs> People always um, ask me, oh, I'm gonna start a business. Where should I start? How do I push my business forward? Before I answer that question, I just need to let people know that here I am uh, running a business that a lot of people would say, oh, that's a successful business. It's a, a small to medium sized business. You're doing really well. It's Sunday, it's 28 degrees. Everyone is out, family, friends, enjoying themselves. Um, some people are out in pubs, some people are in parks, some people may be watching football, other sports events. And I'm in the yard and I'm probably gonna be here for about four to five hours. So in order to make this work, I have to work when other people aren't working. Now I could do this another way. I could just bury my head in the sand and hide underneath some coats and then get up a little bit earlier tomorrow and turn up here. But then there could be something that I've missed and then all I'm gonna do is try and be scrambling around, not be prepared, and my staff are gonna get in and we have limited staff, and then my inadequacies and my shortcomings from today, I'll just try and push it all onto them and um, try to resolve it as best I can. The correct thing to do is to come here today and to see what I'm doing and organize myself so I'm in the best position for Monday morning so I can get through the difficult week that we're gonna have. And saying that, people say, Oh, you're micromanaging. Oh, you should have more staff. You should have this. I have great staff at Asheville. And a lot of the people at Asheville, they don't work at Asheville. They bleed for Asheville. Like they put their heart and soul into everything. But the fact of the matter is, those people are entitled to and they deserve a holiday. They do. And if it just so happens that those people need to go to family weddings and they need to go to things at the same time and it leaves me in the lurch, then so be it because there were plenty of times when they didn't leave me in the lurch and they stayed late and they helped me and they worked hard. It's my name above the door, ultimately, at the moment. Now those people who work here, who I care dearly for, more than just a work level, on a personal level as well, there could be something that happens one day where somebody offers them double the money they're on here and I can't afford to keep them. Now, I'm not the sort of person that holds anyone back because I've had loads of instances in my life where people try to hold me back. I want people to do their best. I would only ask that they just give me enough notice that we can try to replace them and they just help me through to find someone else as best, as best I can. And I genuinely want it to work and I want it to be successful. And I don't want to think to myself um, one day, well, if I would have done this or I would have done that, um, it would have worked. And I don't want to be in a position where I'm blaming everyone else for things not working. So, in the yard on Sunday, on my own, making sure that we are ready for Monday. And there are a number of notes I made um, yesterday as well about emails. I have to let the accounts team know decisions I made. You know, sometimes I make decisions uh, the accounts team don't know about it, um, rates that are given to clients, um, uh, deals that I made with suppliers, and I, I, it's not for my staff to be chasing me round and guessing what I did or how comes this person sent this, how comes this person sent that. I have to take the time as well, because ultimately, while it's my company, I'm still an employee. 
of this company. So I'm gonna send some emails to the uh, captor, Shane, uh, Julia, and Sinead, and I'm gonna let them know what I've done, who I've agreed it with, what those PO numbers are, so they don't waste their time when they could be doing more important things, scrambling around. Ooh, it's got some new tires on there. Scrambling around, trying to figure out what decisions I made when they weren't there. No flats, no ball tires. I've seen no oil leaks. Now, I did ask for there to be a bin on this for Monday, but I'm just going to allow it because I know the boys were busy yesterday. It's looking good. For those of you who are asking questions about the bag implant, I need Bartek to come here and connect the bag implant up, but he is finishing KSIs. Then he needs to go to the um, basement cinema and do a few little bits there. And then at that point, he can come and connect the bag implant. <laughs> and only after he connects the bag implant, can some of the lads come to my house and start working on my shower. I know I'm crying about it a little bit, but I still don't have a shower. In case you guys are wondering why we continually take from the middle of the bay and we leave the material on the outsides of the bay, that is because we want material on both sides so we can support the wall. We do not want the wall to be in a position where it's empty on one side and all the weight is pushing the material, um, pushing the wall in one direction. And while you have people working for you and people will say, just get a manager to do it and make her manage. All right, mate. It's easier said than done, finding the right person. You are not going to find the perfect person to do a job within your company, putting out an ad and interviewing three or four people uh, straight away, and it's the right person. They're going to do everything right just the way you want it. It is not going to work like that. Don't follow people on, on Instagram and other platforms gassing, talking garbage like that because it's nonsense. They're misleading you. There's a lot. I ain't going to mention any names, but there's a lot of people giving business advice which are misleading a lot of people, telling them, telling them to do things in a certain way which aren't realistic and don't work but obviously it doesn't affect those people so it's easy to say it my advice to you if you're running your own business if you want my advice if you're about to start your own business make sure even though you've got staff you know your business to a certain extent and you can be the final line of defense if all goes wrong and nobody's there you can keep the business going and you can manage um, to not let down all your clients and not mess up with all your suppliers, not lose everything you're doing and keep the core business running. Because ultimately, it is your name above the door. And that's it for Asheville Weekly, episode 96. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here, subscribe to our channel. Click here to see an Asheville video you may not have seen before. And click here, no, down there, for last week's episode which was number 95.